Today, we're going to talk about the dot product node. So let's go. Okay, so in order to help you understand the dot product node better, first, I'm going to show you the math that the dot product node is doing. And then I'm going to show you three examples of what you can use it for. So here's our dot product node. And we can see that there are two vectors coming in. And these are VEC3s. I have the normal vector and the view direction vector. And we're combining those together using the dot product. And we get something coming out here uh, over on the right hand side. But what is it and what exactly does the dot product node do? Well, so let's take a look at the math that the dot product node is doing. So I'm just going to come down here to my next example. And this set of nodes here is doing the same thing as the dot product node. So the first thing that we do is split up the two vectors into their X, Y, and Z or R, G, and B components. So their individual float components. And so I've done that with uh, both of the two vectors. And then I multiply the red channel of the first one with the red channel of the second one. I multiply the green channel of the first one with the green channel of the second one. And I multiply the blue channel of the first one with the blue channel of the second one. So I'm bas basically multiplying X's together, multiplying Y's together, and then multiplying Z's together. And then once I get the results of those three, I add them all together to get the final result. Well, it's all nice and good to, to see what the dot product node is doing under the hood, but why exactly does this do anything useful for us to multiply the X, Y, and Z, and then add the results together? Well, let's take a look at a couple of examples of what we can do uh, with this type of math. So uh, just to be clear, um, all of this math here is what the dot product node is doing internally. So I don't ever want to actually create this configuration of nodes here. I just set this up so that you could understand like the breakdown of all of the math and what it's doing. If you were to create this uh, for your node instead of dot product, I think it would actually be a little bit slower to do it this way because the hardware, the graphics hardware has a built in function for doing dot product that turns out to be uh, faster than this. So you don't want to use this node configuration. You actually just want to use uh, the dot product node itself. So if you hit the space bar in Unity's uh, shader graph and type dot, then you get the dot product node and you can use that to perform the dot product operation on two incoming vectors. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the results that we get here. First of all, I'm gonna show you uh, what I'm getting with this dot product operation. I'm just gonna wire this into uh, my fragment program here. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna switch over to Unreal because the preview does a little bit better job of showing me a, a result that, that's clear. All right, so here we are in Unreal and here's my dot product node. And I'm just gonna wire that into base color and you can see that I'm getting this result where my sphere is white when the surface is looking at me and it's dark uh, when the surface is perpendicular to the camera. We'll get into more details about that in a minute, um, but I just wanted to show you that it's converting these two vectors uh, into a single grayscale value. In this case, I'm getting white uh, when looking straight at the object and then black when I'm looking at the edges of the object. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of examples of what we can do with the dot product node. So in this first example, I have a texture here. This is the cobblestones texture that I've been using. And I have a vector three here. And you can see that I have a hard coded value here of 0 0.21, 0 0.71, and 0 0.07. Uh, there's actually a couple of more numbers out here to the side. It's 0 0.0722, uh, 0 0.7152, and then 0 0.2126. Uh, 
Uh, this is a, a little bit of a magic number. And so I take this magic number here and I do a dot product with my texture and I get the desaturated version of the texture. So instead of having color, now I have a black and white image that's just a single channel float value instead of RGB. Well, what this magic number is doing is uh, it's called a perceptual weighting. And basically uh, the reason that um, the green channel has a higher number here is because the cone receptors in your eyes uh, for detecting color are much more sensitive to green than they are to red or to blue. And so when we convert our texture to grayscale, we want to put more weight on the green value than on the red value or the blue value. So let's switch over to Unreal and take a look at the same example. Okay, here we are in Unreal and you can see I've got my texture sample and my cobblestones texture. And I have this same uh, constant value here. Here's a little bit clearer look at what these numbers are. And I recommend that you uh, keep track of this number here because it's really useful if you want to desaturate a texture value and just make a grayscale value from an RGB color value, you can use the dot product node and dot product your texture uh, with this particular number here, 0 0.2126, 0 0.7152, and 0 0.0722. And then what you get, and let's plug this into uh, our root node over here, what you get is the grayscale value of your texture instead of the, the color value. So that's our first example. We can use the dot product node to convert RGB color into grayscale uh, using this fancy magic number here. All right, let's take a look at our next example. And this example is kind of similar to our grayscale conversion. What I've got here is a mask texture. Let's just take a look at this texture really quick. Uh, so in the red channel of this texture, I have a, a black and white mask that looks like this. And then in the green channel, uh, the clumps in my mask are a little bit larger. In the blue channel, they're a bit larger. And then the alpha channel, uh, they're pretty big. So you can see I've got red, green, blue, and alpha. Each of these channels is its own separate mask with a different scale of details. And what I wanna do is I wanna give the user the opportunity to select which of these four masks they want to use. And so I'm gonna plug this texture into the dot product node like this. I've got RGBA plugged into my dot product. And then here is a value that I can expose as a parameter. Right now the value has a one in the red channel and then zero in the other three channels. And what I can do is change this to, if I change the red channel to zero and the green channel to one, for example, now you can see it's got the output as the green channel. If I set this to zero and then set the blue channel to one, now it's exposing the blue channel. And again, Obviously, if I set the blue channel to zero and the alpha channel to one, now it's outputting the alpha channel. So I can expose this parameter to the user and then have the user type in a one in any of the four channels. And the result will be just the channel of the mask that I want them to be able to use. So I can create a texture that has four masks in it and then expose that using a vector four parameter here and then tell the user, hey, just put a one in the channel that you wanna select and that will give you access to red, green, blue, or alpha. And you can pick which of those you want as the result. And so in this case, the user would be selecting the detail that they wanted to see in that texture. All right, let's take a look at the same example in Unity. So here's our select a channel example. You can see that I've got that same mask texture here and we can take a look at it in Unity. You can see I've got my red, green, blue, and alpha channels. Now Unity represents these as actually being red and green and blue right, th right here, um, but they're really not colored like this. They're just a single channel data. 
Uh, it just wants to represent them colored uh, so you can tell which channel is which, but really we're just looking at individual channels and you can see that uh, we've got small data in the red and then the largest data in the alpha. And this is just one example. You know, you could put a really lumpy looking mask in one and a really smooth, blurry looking mask in another just to provide kind of a wide range of mask options and then let the end user choose which of those masks they wanted to use. So again, I've dot producted my texture uh, with its four different channels, RGB and A, with my vector four here. And right now it's using the red channel, but if I put a zero here and then a one in the green channel, now you can see I've exposed the green channel as my output and the blue channel and the alpha channel. So if I were to use my uh, blackboard here and make a, a vector four value and maybe call this mask select selector, then I could drag this out and put my mask selector in here. And now whatever value I put in here for my vector four, whether it's zero, 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 one or one, zero, 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 I'm allowing the user to select uh, which of those output channels I want to use from my mask. So pretty cool. All right, let's take a look at another example. And this last example is probably the most commonly used one, but it's also the most complex to explain. So what I'm going to do is switch over to 3ds Max, where I've just created uh, a simple uh, animated image that we can use to understand what's going on. All right, so what I've got here is a light source up at the top, and I have a plane here representing the surface of our model down here at the bottom. I also have a vector representing uh, a vector that goes from the, the model to the light. And then if I, if I animate this a little bit, I also have a vector here that represents the surface normal. This is the direction that the surface of the model is facing. So I have two vectors here. I have my light vector and I have my surface vector. So this is the direction that the surface is facing. And then this is the direction that's going toward the light or, um, or which direction the light is coming from. And so if I wanna find out how bright this surface is gonna be, what I need to do is compare these two vectors, the surface normal and uh, the light vector. And if I look at the angle between these two normals, I can find out how bright my surface is gonna be. If I animate my light over here, when the light is perpendicular to the surface, I get a dark surface. But when the light is shining right directly down on the surface, I get a bright surface. So in order to figure out what the brightness of my surface should be, I have to compare the angle between my light vector and my surface normal. So if I know what this angle here is, I know if my surface needs to be bright or not. So if my angle is like 90 degrees, I know, oh, well, this surface should be dark. But if my angle is uh, really, really small, I know that these two vectors are parallel with each other. And in that case, I need to make my surface bright. And I can compare the angle between these two vectors using the dot product node. And so you can see visually how that operation works here. Uh, but let's take a look at the nodes and see what they're doing. So here I have my normal vector, and this is the direction that the surface is facing. And here, instead of using the light vector, I'm using the view vector. This is like the, the direction that the camera is pointing. And so what we're gonna be looking at here is uh, whether or not the surface of the model is pointed toward the camera. So I'm comparing the camera vector with the normal vector. And if the two vectors are perpendicular to each other, I'm gonna get a darker surface. And if the two vectors are parallel with each other, in other words, the, the model's surface is pointed right at the camera, I'm gonna get a brighter surface. So this is what it looks like in Unity. Let's switch over to Unreal 5 and take a look at it there. So I'm using these four nodes here to come up with my camera vector. I'm subtracting 
the world position of the object from the camera position and then normalizing the result and passing that into my dot product. And then I'm using my vertex normal um, vector. And when I do a dot product between my view vector and my normal, uh, I'm gonna get a result that is bright when the model is facing toward me and dark when it's facing uh, away from, from me, from my, from my view. So let's wire this into the root and we'll take a look at these results. Okay, so you can see that I'm getting a white color here where the sphere is looking straight at the camera and I'm getting a dark color here uh, where it's looking away from the camera. If I wanted to do a variation on this, I could add a one minus node here and invert this. And this is gonna give me a result that is bright on the edges that are perpendicular to the camera and dark in the middle. There we go. So we got a value that's kind of dark in the middle and then it gets brighter toward the edges. And if you say, hey, that looks kind of like Fresnel, <laughs> you're right. And this is exactly how Fresnel is calculated using the dot product between the surface normal and the view vector. Now I've already created a video that shows how to use uh, this dot product uh, to make a cool looking cloth effect. And that's another example that I wanna show you. So uh, I'll put a link to that video right here. Go ahead and go over and, and watch that video. It'll show you how to use the dot product node uh, to create this Fresnel effect and then how to use that Fresnel effect uh, to create a really cool looking cloth shader. So now would be a good time to jump over and take a look at that uh, to get just a little bit more in depth in how you can use this dot product node to compare the angles between vectors uh, and get lighter on the edges or lighter in the middle uh, when you compare the normal of the model with the camera or view vector. All right, let's review what we went over today. Uh, in both Unreal and Unity, we took a look at the dot product node. I showed you what the math was doing inside the dot product, multiplying the X's, the Y's, and the Z's, and then adding the results together. And then I showed you three examples of how you can use the dot product node first to get the desaturated or grayscale version of a color. Second, as a channel selector to select one of four different masks in the texture. And then finally, to compare the angle between two different vectors and to get a result where if the vectors are parallel, the result is white. And if they're perpendicular, the result is black. So the dot product node is a super useful node that you can use for a bunch of different things. If you guys know of something else, another cool example that you can use the dot product for, I, I'd love to hear about it. Go ahead and put that in the comments uh, down below. And uh, I'd love to take a look at the ideas that you have for using the dot product node. I hope you've learned something useful today and that you can apply these principles in the shaders that you're working on. Next week, we're going to take a look at inputs to the shader. Uh, we did that a little bit today with the, the vertex normal, camera position, absolute world position, a couple of these things, but we're going to dive into more depth with inputs to your shader, uh, and we're going to talk about UV coordinates and some of those other things. So come back next week for that, and until then, have a great week, everybody. 